Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Milan Desai. He's joining us here as Director of Clinical Operations, Heart, Vascular, and Thoracic Institute at Cleveland Clinic. He's going to talk about the recent approval of Chemzios. It's the first and only FDA-approved allosteric and reversible inhibitor selective for cardiac myosin that targets the underlying obstructive HCM. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Desai. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, tell us a bit about yourself briefly, and then let's talk about what this recent FDA approval of Chemzios means for patients and practitioners. Uh, thanks again. Uh, my name is Malin Desai, and I'm a cardiologist. I direct the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Center at the Cleveland Clinic, and I am the Director of Clinical Operations for Cardiovascular Medicine uh, at the Cleveland Clinic. So as everybody has heard recently, FDA approved Mavacamten, uh, which is a selective cardiac myosin inhibitor, now goes by the trade name of Camzios. Uh, for years and years, uh, in terms of medical therapy, as it relates to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there was no drug that was specifically developed and FDA approved for treatment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. All the data for the previous drug that, that we still continue to use is based on mostly observational data in small studies. So uh, CAMZIOS is a first in class where prospectively done studies, randomized controlled trials have shown that it helps improve symptoms, quality of life, exercise capacity, and significantly reduces gradient, uh, left ventricular outflow tract gradient. So at the very least, now we have an FDA-approved specific drug for this disease, which is first in its class. Uh, and as I said, it has expanded the tent of offering for these patients. So you can look at it in the following different ways. In some patients, it may serve as an alternative to invasive procedures. In some patients, it may delay or defer. Uh, and a lot of patients don't have access to high quality invasive like surgery or alcohol separation type care. So it may provide a, a bigger option uh, or a more broader option to such patients. So all in all, it's pretty exciting to have a first in class drug uh, for this disease that was developed specifically for this disease. Now, the fact that it's developed specifically for this disease, is that what excites you most about this approval? Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, that, that's, yes, as I alluded to, some of the drugs that are used in this context, the beta blockers, the calcium channel blockers, and disopyramide, they were never really specifically developed for this disease. And most of the data, uh, as it relates to them, come from observational retrospective uh, uh, studies, not prospective randomized control trials. So yes, yeah, more specifically developed drugs. Talk about some of the symptoms of HCM. How does it affect people in, in different ways? So yes, HCM, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, basically uh, what it is, is it results in a, a significant thickening of the heart muscle and the heart muscle uh, is stiff and does not use energy efficiently and 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 it it create and in about 60 70% patients there's also obstruction to the flow of blood outside of the heart so all in all all these things result in a fair bit of symptoms what are some of the symptoms shortness of breath uh, especially with exertion uh, is an important symptom Sometimes people get dizzy. It is because of either obstruction or due to arrhythmias that are also ubiquitous in this situation. Some patients, because of the very thick heart muscles and compression of the blood vessels within the heart, they may develop anginal-like symptoms. Uh, some patients <clears throat> uh, may be asymptomatic uh, and may never develop overt manifestations. And some of them, they develop burnt out scenario where they develop heart failure like symptoms and and eventually small group may end up needing transplant. The dreaded complication is sudden cardiac death in the context of uh, a, 
a bad arrhythmia. Uh, fortunately, with evolution of science and our understanding of the disease, the risk of sudden cardiac death has dropped down to about half percent per year per patient. So we are making strides, but there's a lot of patients who are also underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, or or you know they are just never diagnosed. Uh, in fact, that, in fact, there is data that has suggested that th the top three reasons before a real diagnosis of HCM is made include uh, you have just a benign heart murmur, you may have childhood cardiac asthma, or you are just plain anxious and crazy. So, so you know there is as many people who have the correct diagnosis. We believe there are a lot more who may be misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed. But once you are diagnosed, how does Chemzios work? Yes. So Chemzios, what it is, as you have mentioned, is it's a direct cardiac myosin inhibitor. So in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, what happens is at a mu muscle level, at a microscopic muscle level, there is significant hypercontractility. So essentially, uh, the muscles are in a state of overdrive. There's something called actin-myosin cross-bridging, and there's uh, too much of that. Uh, there's too much of that that makes the heart muscle very contractile. Uh, your ejection fraction is hypernormal, and also there is inefficient use of cardiac energetics, and the heart muscle is stiff. So all in all, these things occur at a microscopic level in an HCM patient. Uh, they result in outflow tract obstruction as well as diastolic dysfunction. Uh, outflow tract obstruction is often associated with mitral regurgitation, et cetera. Uh, so what ends up happening, all, all these things result in symptoms. So CAMZIOS, what it does is it reduces the hypercontractility just enough that it relieves the gradient. It significantly improves the gradient. The outflow tract gradient is reduced that helps improve the symptoms. It also indirectly in, improves the degree of mitral regurgitation, which also helps uh, with the symptoms. And it improves the energy efficiency of the heart muscle, which also helps the symptoms. So, so it has the potential, it, it has been demonstrated uh, and it has the potential of working at, at many different fronts, in many different fronts. Well, first of all, with this recent FDA approval, how do you plan to integrate Chemzios into your treatment practices there at the Center for Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy in the Cleveland Clinic? And then tell us where listeners can uh, go to learn more about HCM. So uh, how are we going to incorporate in our practice? So Chemzios, at least the current indication is uh, it was approved for patients with New York Heart Association class two or three, uh, uh, not class four and certainly not asymptomatic and patients who have obstructive HCL. So it is only approved for people with resting or provocable outflow tract, uh, LV, significant outflow tract obstruction, which typically is defined as greater than 30 millimeters uh, at rest and greater than 50 millimeters uh, at peak stress. But be it as it may, it is approved only for symptomatic, not advanced symptomatic patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So that's where we will plan on incorporating in our patient population. So uh, currently our standard of care is treat them with first line therapies like uh, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, et cetera. So in our context, the way we have started to incorporate this is if you, if you, uh, are still symptomatic despite the use of first-line therapy Then we incorporate. There are plenty of patients who have side effects from these first-line therapies. In those patients, we incorporate, uh, we have started to incorporate mavacampin. Uh, again, right now, we are only talking about the FDA-approved indication, but recently we have published uh, or presented data on the Valor HCM trial where we have shown that in obstructive HCM patients, with advanced symptoms, it can reduce the need for heart surgery or alcohol ablation by about 82%. So more indications will evolve uh, with time. Now, where can clinicians go learn about HCM? There's, there's lots and lots of uh, areas. So well, all the major cardiovascular organizations okay. like American Heart, 
College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, uh, as well as the European folks, they have uh, educational programs. There is also obviously the company that manufactures and markets Chemzios uh, will have its uh, own program or, or websites that you can go to. There are uh, patient advocacy organizations uh, like HCMA that has educational material. So the time couldn't be better for a patient or a provider to seek understanding of HCM if they so choose. Dr. Desai, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Milan Desai. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 